Good morning. Good morning, morning. Dr. Carl. Yeah. Good La- morning, guys. Last time we spoke to you, it's because you had a book out called The Fifty Shades of Grey Matter. Yep. This and one's hilarious. Yes. We love your book titles. This one is... Game of Knowns. <laughs> Science is coming. And you've got the you've got the Game of Thrones like uh, chair and um, it's done with pencils. And see how I'm squatting down so I look like my favourite character, the imp. The yeah. imp. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Well, he gets a fair run on the show too. Everybody you like gets killed. Uh, everybody has random... Uh, Highly gymnastic, non-meaningful sex, but luckily nobody smokes cigarettes. And the dogs are really cool. I love the dire wolf. Yes, They're intelligent, telepathic, and faithful. Yes. I want one. I want a wolf too. <laughs> now, Dr. Carl, what have we got in this book? Ah, uh, well, a few stories about alcohol. Firstly, if you have two rum and diet cokes, you'll be over the limit. But if you have two rum and reg- regular cokes, you won't be. You know, I've heard this. Wow. Wow. And, and exactly. what's the reason why? Okay. Well, your stomach only processes food at so many kilojoules a minute. Yeah. Uh, and so if you have a rum and diet Coke, it's got a 1,000 kilojoules, gets through quickly, goes into your bloodstream, you get up to 0.054, you get busted, go to jail. It, however, if you have two rum and regular Cokes with sugar, you've got 2,000 kilojoules, it stays in your stomach longer, the alcohol gets broken down by the acids, and you only go up to 0.034. So, Dr. Carl, Extraordinary- when people say to you, you should eat before you go out and have, you know, a bit of a crack, um, yes. that's the way to go. Yes. Uh, so it slows and, uh, down the processing. It slows down the processing, so you don't get so much alcohol going to the bloodstream. On the other hand, uh, some people might say, my whole aim in life is just to get ripped off my face as quickly as possible, <laughs> and that's... <laughs> Unfortunately, sad. Yeah, that right. is sad. Yeah, because if, if we don't my brother that. and I, I, I have a relative who gave up alcohol for various reasons, and he kept on hanging around with his mates. He said, "They speak such crap." Never <laughs> <laughs> true words. Welcome Dr. to alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one thing that we've always wanted to know here. Okay, yeah. so. There's two sets of identical twins. Yes. Two boys identical twins. Mm-hmm. Two girl identical twins. Yep. They marry each other. Yep. What do their babies come out the same? No, because the uh, that's, that's why we have sex. Not because it feels good, but because nature wants us to have babies that are all different. There are some creatures that um, reproduce without sex. The uh, whip tail lizard uh, is female in uh, the Texas part of South of North America, yep. and so they're female and they give birth to females, which give birth to females, which give birth to females. And the advantage is that they're all they uh, never have to put up with men. They never <laughs> have to put up with men, and they reproduce very quickly, and they re- very quickly fill their ecological niche. The disadvantage is that they're all the same and so if the climate changes, then they die out or right, the so disease no comes diversity. through. So um, depending on which sperm come out, so there's you know, 20, 50 million sperm come out and you don't know which one's going to come out and then how that joins with the egg and, and then the random mixing so the children can be quite quite different. But is okay, it possible? Is it possible that they could have two babies that are nearly exactly the same? Uh, possible but unlikely. Okay. I've got a question for you. Lay is it me. true that if when your child is... Um, of the age of two, if you double their height, that's the height they'll finish up at. Ish. Right. Really? So, so Ish. within within a couple of Plus centimetres? Ten, within 10%. Okay. Really? Yeah, ish. Okay. I have heard that before. So How interesting. Oh, they say that, and I thought, oh, is it a It varies, fallacy? it varies. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it depends on what happens to them, if they get good nutrition, if they uh, yes. have a growth spurt, if they hit puberty early or late, a whole lot of variable factors. Oh, uh, Rachel's in Mount Helena. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Rach. Hi, Rachel. Hi, good morning. Now, good what's morning. What's your question for Dr. Carl? Right, my question is, Dr. Carl, uh, at the front of my parents' house, mm. in, especially in summer weather, mm. blowflies will hang around the door. Yep. Now, my auntie said, get a snap lock bag, sandwich bag, fill it half with water and hang it, clip it to the front of the door, fly screen door, and they won't come, and they do not come. Why is that? Uh, have you tried not having the uh, plastic bag there and see what happens? Uh, yes. We put it away and they've returned. Have you written this down and kept records or are you relying on memory? No, just memory. Ah, I can't trust memory. You can, you can implant a memory into one quarter of people really easily. So what you uh, need to do is memory. put on a white coat and have a clipboard. No, no just, just a notepad is fine yeah. and just yeah. write it all down yeah. and then write down all the conditions and then you'll see, then, then call us back and let us know if the effect is still So it real. has to be the same weather conditions. Yeah, well, just, just note what you find. Same length of time. Yeah, just yep. write it down. Write it down, put down a record. So this is how Elizabeth Loftus implanted a false memory into one quarter of people. She's at Anaheim University of California, which is, you know, is 
where Disneyland is. Yes. yes. She got the students in, said, here's 100 bucks now, here's 100 bucks uh, in a year's time. Uh, we're just going to do a test on you. Oh, by the way, oh, shame, they're busy. By the way, have you been to Disneyland? She knew the answer was yes. And then she asked the question, did you get a hug from Daffy Duck? And they said either yes or no, I don't know. And then they went in. One year later, they came back. They didn't care about the results. All they wanted was a chance that she could say that sentence. One year later, they came back and she said, oh, hi, welcome back. Here's your 100 bucks. Oh, look, they're a bit busy, by the way. And then she asked an open-ended question. Do you have... Uh, have you been to Disneyland? Yes. And do you have any memories of Disneyland? And one quarter of them said, yes, I remember getting uh, a cuddle from Daffy Duck, which is impossible because... Daffy Duck is from Warner Brothers. Daffy Duck is from Warner Brothers. It's Donald Duck. Yeah. So yes. she implanted that false memory into one quarter of people by that simple question. That is crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That. And also people remember anything from money. And I got out. something right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that from, was incredible. From one Dr. Nathan to another. Dr. Nathan of Secret Harbour. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hey, Nathan. Morning, Nathan. 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 Uh, talk to us. What's your question for Dr. Carl? My question is, with um, uh, hair colour, so whether it be blonde, black, brown, as mm-hmm. you age, how or why does the hair follicle change to grey? Uh, what happens is that you've got uh, roughly 100,000 hairs on your scalp, um, and manufacturing each one is a little factory called a hair follicle, and it's got a sub-factory built within it, which is a little dye factory, which injects dye into the uh, hair shaft as it's extruded out. Two things happen. Firstly, the rate of production of your hair shaft increases. So instead of uh, a centimetre, a, a millimetre every five or six days, it suddenly turns into twice that. Secondly, the hair shaft gets wider. Okay. This puts a load on a hair follicle. Okay. It produces chemicals called ROS, or reactive oxidative species, which then poison the dye factory. Oh, oh wow. Poison the dye factory. And so you'll notice that the grey hairs, the first grey hairs coming out, are really long and scraggly. They're longer than the rest, and they're fatter as well. Right. Why this happens, we don't know, but we only discovered this in the last five years. And, and the notion of somebody turning grey overnight because they've stress, been subjected yeah. to some sort of trauma. What happens? Their follicles Does get Does it right? happen? What's the story? Um, they ha- they're already uh, partially grey, so they have a mixture of white hairs and ordinary hairs. And then the stress can call, cause a normal hairs to drop out, leaving behind only the white hairs. So I, I know oh. somebody oh. that this happened to as a child. also called alopecia areata can do that as yeah. well. A, 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 he was a teenager and, and one of his um, friends, close friends was killed in a car accident, mm-hmm. very traumatic for, for everybody concerned. And he went grey within... Within weeks, as a as a teenager. Oh, if, if he had short hair, there's no doubt uh, that stress causes hair to go grey. Have a look at uh, Mr. Abbott's hair yep. and see how it'll change. Every politician, their yeah. hair goes grey very quickly. Yeah, Once AFL coaches too. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Great <laughs> question there, Nathan. We're going to give you one of these uh, Dr. Carl books, oh, all right? To Nathan, I'll, oh, well I'll autograph it. There you go, buddy. Nathan, you. that is all yours. He appreciates yes. it. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, let's take one more if we can. Let's go to Georgia in Aussie Park. Hi, Georgia. Hi, I have a question for Dr. Carl. Mm. Go for it. Why is yawning contagious? Um, we know that yawning question. is contagious if you are a person who can express empathy. So you might be schizophrenic or autistic, and while you might have empathy inside you, you can't express it. In that case, you don't catch the yawn. We also know that uh, uh, yawning is contagious just when you're talking about it, and you might feel something happening yeah, on the yeah. corner of your jaw. Uh, whenever rats yawn, they have an erection. Uh, you don't oh. necessarily yawn because you're very no, you're tired. Rat, Sean? <laughs> Part rat. Um, Master Splinter. Uh, it's nothing to do with oxygen. You can feed people 100% oxygen instead of the wussy 21% oxygen and they'll still yawn. So why do we do it when we're more tired? Uh, you can. We don't know that. Mm. Uh, we do know that also yawning is a sign of recovering from an illness. And so on one occasion I was travelling between Sydney and Perth. We were halfway across Nullarbor and suddenly this big, uh, enormous, muscly guy started having a heart attack. Uh, I started freaking out because there was no nitroglycerin. I could feed him oxygen. Uh, it was a single aisle plane so I couldn't... Um, even jumped down on his chest there was no defibrillator mm. I was thinking this guy is going to die there's not a single thing I can do about it and then suddenly he yawned I knew he was going to get better and he did <gasps> oh wow just like, that. just like that yeah I didn't do anything he did it all for me no ma- maybe you did it mentally yeah that's it yawn yawn for me come on yawn <laughs> god damn it yawn <laughs> yes. god damn it there you go I'll tell you a really boring story now yawn <laughs> there you go Georgia we're going to give you one of Dr. Carl's books as well baby so much. No worries, right. Georgia. Good on you, Georgia. The book is called Game of Knowns. Science is coming just in time for Christmas. This is a good one to it give is the a kids so they can book. learn something. Always a pleasure to have you in, Dr. Carl. Thank you. It's been a great honour. Thanks, mate. We very much like your shirt, as always. Yes, we do. Uh-huh. Ladybug. Ladybug.